my name's Ambi. Um, this is my story. I'm 23. I am an electrical engineer, also known as a fancy spark. Um, just depends who you ask. Uh, I um, live in Lisburn, grew up in Lisburn. Um, I help out with the church, um, do the live stream sort of stuff. Sometimes well, sometimes not so well. I left school um, and then went to university over in England um, to study music. That lasted a year because I found out and sort of came to the realisation that the job of a, like a ginger singer-songwriter was already kind of taken. Um, so opportunities were limited. Yeah, uh, like op options were limited. I could have moved to Benidorm, but the skin wouldn't have really worked too well over there. It would cost a lot of money in sun cream. I, I, actually, I actually started in Lagan Valley Vineyard uh, two years ago, this today. It was the first time I ever came. And leading up to that, I was in a pretty low place. Like some students watching this might know like the homesickness, the, the loneliness you feel. I came home, I was really homesick and I, I was going through a lot. Um, and I met up with a friend who comes here. Um, we went we went out for a wee ice cream. Um, and uh, he invited me along. I, I live around the corner. Like I, I knew he came here, didn't really know much of this church. Um, so I, I, can't, I, I, I just went, you know what, screw it, I'll, I'll come along. Um, and so I did, and it was so good. I actually stayed for both services. I didn't realize they would be the same thing, <laughs> but they were. Both as good as each other. Um, but yeah, follow on a couple of weeks, um, I was able to meet some really nice people, some really great people that I'm still friends with, and uh, friendships have just flourished. Um, and so I got invited along to tribes. Uh, I went to the Young Adults Tribe at James and Hannah Toll's house. And it was just really a really lovely experience. Um, uh, at the end of it, we they they all prayed for me, um, which is something that has never happened. Um, having seven people you barely know standing incredibly close to you, praying over you, it wouldn't happen. Today, it wouldn't happen today, you know. Um, uh, back, in day, back, in, <laughs> back in the good old days, you could lay a hand on a shoulder and not get a £200 fine for it. Um, yeah, uh, and I had that real, like, you know, if, if anyone's been lucky enough to encounter the Holy Spirit, you, you kind of know the feeling, your chest gets heavy, your knees get a bit weak, kind of like the Eminem song. Um, and, like, I just knew there was something different going on. Like, in my head... Um, I was either going into cardiac arrest or I was having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Um, I didn't know if I needed a Bible or an ambulance. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just went for the Holy Spirit one. And I just from then on, I'm like this, Jesus is real. Jesus loves me. Jesus is in my life. That's amazing. Um, so your life has evolved since you changed quite a bit. In what way has it changed since that moment where you encountered um, I, uh, so like I said previously, I really struggled with loneliness and feeling isolated, you know, felt like I could go out with a whole group of friends and just have the feeling that I didn't need to be there. These guys can all get on and that's fine. Um, but ever since coming here, like I have developed such a great community around me, people that love me, like Jesus has blessed my life with friends. Um, I can go to any one of my friends with absolutely anything and they'll be there for me. Um, but not only that, you know, growing up, you, you, you know, you, you're influenced by your parents on your thoughts and your ideas and stuff like that there. But there were certain things in my life that I wanted to live life by, you know, be kind, be generous. And I seen a lot of people, especially in university, that were really not really going down that route and things that I didn't really agree with. And I, I didn't know why. I just, it, it, just what I wanted to do. But from f uh, following Jesus, it, it actually, I've come to realize that that was actually me having values to live like Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I firmly believe that Jesus was actually working in me long before I actually knew who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, setting the groundwork, you know, sowing the seeds. Mm -hmm. 
and you know now I'm just growing that. The one thing this church does so well is community, and you know you're never short of a smile from Laura or a cup of tea from Laura or a biscuit <laughs> from Laura, um, <laughs> or any other the staff members or anyone else in the church. Um, and you know that's just one thing that really you know is so great and you know systematically that's just ripped away from lockdown and church having to be online and you know people some people will experience it you know the fact that it's on a screen some people can't engage the depth of the sermon is as deep as your laptop screen you know uh and that it's really difficult and if anyone thinks that no one else has felt that i can hold my hands up now and say that i have felt that a lot um but you know, the one thing is that there's going, there is light at the end of the tunnel and we are coming out of this, like we are meeting up, you know, we are going to be in house soon. Um, but even, you know, the Lord has blessed the world with iPhone and what's up, you know, just that, you know, if you're watching this here, you know, that one person that you're thinking of, or even if you feel like you are that person, just, you know, text one of your mates, like the love to hear from you because no doubt they're feeling somewhat similar mm. what has Jesus added to your life since um yeah like he he's added like purpose and understanding front and foremost and and love you know as I've said before like I wanted to live I wanted to live life in a certain way I didn't realize that that was living life like Jesus and you know the level of understanding and purpose that that has now given me you know I'm not just being generous because I want to be generous. I'm now being generous because I want to live like Jesus. And I want people to, you know, people that haven't met Jesus, you know, notice that there's something different going on and that that is Jesus. Like there's less of me and there's more of him. You know, I am a servant to the kingdom and I just want to do the kingdom's work. And for people that, you know, I'm fortunate enough to work in an industry that I meet a lot of people and I get to speak to a lot of people. Um, a, a lot of people, you know, it sometimes can be very difficult to find Jesus on a building site in the middle of Down Patrick. But I do what I can to make sure that's known. And that, you know, that really gives me a good sense of purpose. And mm. that two years ago, um, sort of like July, August, um, two years ago, I got asked as part of the youth team, to bring some of our, our guys and girls down to a like a summer retreat called Move um, down in Dublin. Um, shout out to Chris McNaught for taking me to a cafe in Dundalk that doesn't sell any meat. <laughs> I was so tempted to go to the centre around the corner for a sausage pot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we went down to Dublin. It's really the first time I've ever experienced something like that. And it was amazing. And there was worship, there was, you know, teachings, and there was just, like, getting to know people. And I was really fortunate. I was quite close to when I first started church, so it really, really allowed me to really get to know some people. Um, but there was one evening in worship in which, you know, things were just... Things were happening. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit was moving. And a good friend of mine was uh, standing beside me, and then started uncontrollably weeping you know he he had definitely had an encounter with the holy spirit and i thought that was really odd i had never seen you know been in a public place with another like 21 year old fella who is crying uncontrollably i thought that was a bit odd but fair play um and you know fast forward five minutes i was then uncontrollably weeping um and it was just a, such an immense feeling like you don't know he, you know, it's it's like trying to explain to someone what chocolate tastes like if they never tasted chocolate, you know? Like, the Holy Spirit had come upon me and I had just... I just couldn't process that. Like, it was just so much. and But you just got that overfel overwhelming feeling of love. Love and that you are loved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from, from that experience in Tribes and from that experience in Move... I, you know, any time, you know, especially through lockdown, any time, like, you know, you feel distant, you feel like God's not moving or maybe something that you didn't didn't want to happen happened, something bad happened, 
you know, like it happens to everyone, um, that I have two pivotal moments that I can go back to and say, you know, God is real. You know, he loves me. He values me and he cares for me. And he is working, even if I don't see it, he is working. And yeah, I think that that's just, that gives me a comfort in knowing that even if I don't feel him, I know he's good and I know he's there, regardless of what happens. <laughs>